Welcome back to Tech, Tesla, and Trends. There's a lot that has been floating around since Elon fully acquired Twitter uh, yesterday, and thought I would comment upon a couple of things. Number one, I figured I'd walk back through some of the, the ten dimensions of, uh, of Elon's chess game here and explain how that relates to Twitter, and then touch base on something he posted under board Elon, and uh, we'll go from there, or the open letter that he, he wrote to everyone. So the first is the goals, and made it very clear that his goal <clears throat> is to help, help the future of civilization and have a common digital square. That, that really is, at the core, what drives Elon. He, he wants to have humanity survive. He loves humanity. That's an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, there are people who are driven by a, a sense of greed or a sense of, of overall um, technological drive to achieve a certain project one way or the other. And there are people who are driven from a philanthropic, th philanthropic position, which I believe is actually... Elon's direction. Now the thing to keep in mind is that his definition of philanthropy or philanthropy is uh, really something we have to think about uh, and, and do so in a way that makes sense to comprehend the actions that are being taken. Number one, philanthropy is not something that you just throw money at and assume even if there, even if everything you do fails, um, then it's okay. This, this may be a result <clears throat> if everything fails, but from an outset, it is important that we focus on what the end is at the conclusion of the activity. So with, with Elon, when somebody reached out from the UN to say, hey, let's end, end world hunger with this money, Elon said, give me the details. Oh, and by the way, post it online in a clear, where a clear and open conversation can occur. This is the important part that most people don't get. A lot of others in that um, field are interested in the glory for themselves, or hey, I gave away X number of dollars. Elon is all about results. The results matter, as illustrated by uh, the comment he made to Parag uh, when Parag was trying to uh, school him during the days when he was on the board or was going to join the board. You can't be talking like this. Well, Elon said, what, are you, what have you accomplished? Or what have you done today, I believe it was. And that's important important to keep in mind. This is the mindset you have to recognize if you're going to understand how this Twitter deal impacts the world around us. So the next one of the dimensions there is that whole, uh, it's the decision process. Um, and the, you know, the decision is very clear. It was to buy Twitter. Yes, it was an expensive deal from his perspective, but I, I don't think money's ever been an issue with Elon. He's willing to spend the money. He's willing to go broke. And he's made that abundantly clear multiple times in his life to accomplish a goal that he believes in passionately. And the, the, the future of humanity is one that he absolutely believes in. If you're, if you're paying attention to all of the companies that Elon runs, the future of humanity and its survival is foremost on his brain, foremost at all times. It, it's part of who he is. Um, so that that's an important thing to keep in mind. The, uh, the other part is to recognize that he recognizes none of this is easy. A lot of people are out there going, well, he doesn't understand. I, I think he understands a lot better than those folks have given him credit for. And it's not just from a, uh, a fanboy perspective here that I'm, I'm talking, 
but one that is based on what are his goals in life? What is he seeking to achieve? And again, it comes back to that multiplanetary vision. And part of that requires that humanity itself survives and is functional to achieve these goals. Now, when you have the, the old paradigm, and, and for those of you who are un, unaware of Tony Siba's work, you, you really need to take some time to go watch a few of his uh, YouTube videos. It's going to change the way you think about what you're observing in the world today. We are in the middle of a phase change disruption. There are so many bits and pieces of different technologies that are intercombining to rapidly alter the way the world economy operates and the way that people think. That does not mean that it's going to change pol political realities overnight, but it also doesn't mean that broken ideals are going to suddenly start working in this regard. You know, Communism and socialism has failed every time it has been implemented. That's not going to change. You can't get something for nothing. There, there has to be a work involved and, and something exchanged. That's what's occurring with Twitter, is an exchange of ideas. That exchange of ideas has value to the overall long-term goal of Elon Musk. It is furthering that survival of humanity as a species, as a, as a, as a group, so that we can become multi-planetary. If we nuke ourselves now, as some would argue is the, the better plan so that they can reset the world, well, guess what? That doesn't solve the problem. It only turns back the clock in a way that is disastrous for humanity as a whole. And those that believe otherwise are anarchists in most, most instances. At their, at their heart. They want to be the sole warlord. And that is a sad, sad position to be in as, as a person, in my opinion. So looking at it, it is important for us to understand that uh, Elon has a plan. And the time frame on that is just, you know, when Russia started talking about nuke in the world, starting World War III, that's when Elon's tune changed and ultimately just decided, you know, I'm not going to argue over this bot issue. I'm just going to buy it now, start now, get it done, because this is the only way to change the conversation of the world is to be part of that. And then when you look at the reasoning behind it is that uh, when people have free speech, they have the ability to come up with converse or come up with solutions together. I believe that as we reason together, pondering the details of the world around us and actually discussing them with an intent to be honest with each other and have dialogue rather than to score political points for no reason whatsoever other than, hey, I was right and you were wrong. Well, who cares if we both die? It's stupid. This is where we have to get over the, the left versus right across the world. It comes down to we are humanity. We need to work together. And that does not mean that we are after some giant socialist utopia. What is important is that we are having a conversation together and determining how we will work together. Murdering people is not a solution. And that is essentially the argument of the Great Reset. Let's murder a whole bunch of people and we can come back to a, a, a norm where, where kings and queens can rule again. And, and that's just not going to work. It, it was a failed system back then. There was more blood and horror, and it's just, it's not going to solve the world that we live in. So it's, it's really fundamentally important to understand why Elon is buying Twitter, why he bought Twitter. And 
you know, when it comes down to it, the next portion of that is the resources he has available to him. And that's obviously there's money there. But the other aspect is he has access to all of his engineering core, all of his programmers, all of the all of the code monkeys that Elon has are the best in the world. They are working for him because they believe in humanity as well. And they want to solve real problems that are, uh, that are actually in the world and not just do foo-foo stuff. This is, they're, they're working hard. These are the people that get stuff done. And th then you look at the material side. Well, obviously there's the material we're looking at with Twitter is code. And, you know, that's an easy thing for, <laughs> I mean, where did Elon begin? Writing code. This is something he does. It's something he understands. This is a native environment for, for Elon Musk. Whether people want to admit that or not, there's a reason he is a meme lord. There's a reason he's the troll supreme. He understands what he's dealing with in Twitter. Yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, there's going to be headaches. And yes, there's going to be problems. But he will hit each one of those. And it's a game of whack-a-mole that he will win. So th then you look at the manufacturing side of that, that dimension. And you end up with, it's writing code. Simple. This, you know, the bits and bytes and organizing them. First things first, eliminate that destructive code that's limit that is limiting speech and seeking to divide by enabling bots that re, that generate echo chambers on Twitter. The first thing you can do is have a conversation with somebody you disagree with, because I will wager that as you have that conversation, and I've I, I have attempted to do the same, learn something from each and every one of those. You may not agree at the end of the day, and that is perfectly fine. It is a wonderful thing that we are not all mind-numbed robots that do exactly the same thing and have the exact same programming. The one true narrative fails because it isn't human. It is absolutely counter to humanity and the diversity that we actually are as people and as individuals. This is why, again, it is critical to the survival of humanity that Elon bought Twitter. Free speech does matter, and it's not just in America. It's around the world. And yes, there are countries and nations that will fear and quake over the very concept of free speech. Because when people talk, it's dangerous. Ideas flow. Ooh, scary ideas. Yes, I know. They're their control of the world is what they're after. Well, those days, I, I pray that those days never come and that they are ending because the control of individuals' thought patterns, the control of the words they speak is limiting in what can be achieved. When we limit ourselves, we limit the world. And coming down to the knowledge base requirement, an aspect of that, you know, again, eliminating the bans for speech. Speech is speech. It matters. Learning from others, where they are coming from. Maybe they have a false belief that is limiting their thinking. If you can help them understand as you reason together, then you can achieve more as a group rather than as enemies. Imagine that, reasoning together, rather than yelling slander and screaming at the top of your lungs that you don't agree with me, so that makes you evil. No. When you have a conversation with somebody else, remember, they're people. People have different opinions. People have different experiences. It's okay. Breathe have a conversation, you might find you like them, even though they believe differently than you. Heaven knows, I've got a lot of people that in my life, they don't believe anything about the things I believe, but I like them as individuals. And I learn something from their interaction. This is important. We should be able to talk to anybody 
and come together as a, as a group. Coming back to the multidimensional chess game here, leadership. Leadership's an important part of this. First thing Elon had to do was fire the dead weight. Parag was an idiot. He was all about that one true narrative. That's what he wanted. He wanted to be in charge and feel like he was a wonderful person. Wonderful people seldom accomplish things. And again, that comes down to that conversation. Well, you're, you're distressing the Twitter employees. I'm sorry. What have you done today? That's a really good question. What have you done today to make the world a better place? If all you have done is called somebody names, that was not productive. You failed. If all you have done is screamed about some other thing that has no bearing to the conversation and fails to address a solution, you failed. Learn to create solutions in the moment. Discuss them with real intent. Together, we can solve more problems than we create when we are not yelling at each other. It's simple. It really is. Civility matters. And we can, as a people online, do just that. Talk. Imagine that without yelling at each other, without slandering each other, without coming to the point where we are seeking each other's demise. That's not a solution. The final item here is the financial. And, you know, obviously, $54 billion, that's a serious stake in the game. As I've mentioned before, Elon is totally willing to go broke to solve a solution, to solve a problem and come up with that solution, I should say. That is important to recognize. It's who he is. And then as you look at the other thing that uh, Elon laid out in his, his open letter to the world of why he bought Twitter, he makes it clear that a lot of people think he's not for advertisement, that he's not interested in that. But fundamentally, as he says, um, Twitter aspires to be the most respected advertising platform in the world that strengthens our brands and grows your enterprise. Imagine that. Strengthen a brand and grow an enterprise. But I love this part. To everyone who has partnered with, with us, thank you. Let us build something extraordinary together. Remember that. Extraordinary together. We can build together. It's okay to have different mindsets, different viewpoints. It is not a threat to humanity. We as a people are diverse in every way, shape, and form. And it has nothing to do with, or uh, he creating that solid block of non-diversity that you're, you're striving for with the one true narrative fails to heal. It only creates more hatred and destruction amongst groups of people who then must fight each other. Learn to talk to each other. That's the whole point of why Elon bought Twitter. So that humanity can talk to each other. There are no boundaries on Twitter. The only thing you can't do is threaten life or liberty, essentially. And maybe even liberty is a conversation point. You should absolutely be able to discuss it. But threatening somebody's life, that's gone too far. You don't do that. That's just wrong. You have the right to think for yourself. Even in a communist dictatorship, even in North Korea, you can think for yourself. But don't dare speak about it. Now, on, in Twitter and the world that Elon is building, you can absolutely discuss it. Think for yourself. You should think for yourself. Learn and overcome. That's the point of Twitter. Have a conversation. Start a conversation. Meet different people who believe differently than you. 
perhaps both of you will learn something. That's a wonderful thing. And for those of you wondering why Doge is always on Elon's mind, perhaps someday we'll have a Doge tip jar. If that hasn't already been announced, I'll bet you one comes soon. I noticed today that Doge is spiking. I wonder why. Twitter was bought by Elon yesterday. Hmm. Interesting. Well, for now, have a great... We'll talk to you later.